Welcome. Uh, apologies for the bit of technical glitch just now. Uh, good afternoon from Kuala Lumpur. It is now 11.17pm. Uh, uh, so today I'd like to um, talk about our upstream digital uh, value chain and journey into our digital transformation. All right. So just wanted to share in terms of you know, we hear about um, major energy for, uh, firms uh, initiating a digital transformation, um, mainly now out of necessity due to the challenges that we see across the, the value chain. So in terms of uh, Petronas upstream business, that is no uh, exception. So we talk about um, what is digital transformation and uh, basically why is it crucial in building those capabilities towards business sustainability. So the aims are various, from uh, business improvement to productivity to safer hydrocarbon uh, discovery and subsequently uh, monetization. So hence, um, the question that um, I would like to pose here is, is there really such thing as uh, what we call a digital strategy? So in, in this sense, right, um, we talk about digital strategy is business strategy. So there shouldn't, from our lens, there shouldn't be any difference between what you say um, digital transformation should do and what you say is your business target. So this is where uh, in context we put on the left-hand side, we say that digital strategy is about how we entrench digital in our way of work, in our day-to-day -day, uh, operations, in our day-to-day -day business. And how do, do, how do we do that? is basically um, by the use of uh, innovative way where information is thus combined with technology to raise uh, human and machine performance. So basically, how do we put in uh, the data that we have to good use so that we elevate how as humans we make decisions. So leading to that aspiration to use digital to make those better decisions and to optimize across the value chain. And from there, we unlock the resources, we unlock uh, more uh, you know, safe uh, ways of work and more efficiently. So this is in context of how we see, or how, uh, at least from a strategic perspective, we see how digital is pursued as part of the business strategy uh, for Petronas Upstream. I'd like to go across uh, what we call as um, the data value chain, for that matter. Okay, um, the data value chain is something that we see, you know, um, digital transformation is not a walk in the park. The, the challenge are uh, the various. Um, just now, one of the presenters uh, rightly mentioned the energy industry is a very capital in, um, intensive industry. The key here now in this current price and also uh, situation is finding that oil hidden in the data. So coming into context of uh, Petronas upstream business, uh, at least in the, the Malaysia front, it is, uh, we are brown field. So how do we extract that additional um, you know, barrels of oil from the, the mass uh, data that we have? How do we um, get that additional barrels of oil without the additional uh, capex? that is normally required for field uh, improvement uh, programs. Okay, um, this is where this chart is actually showing what we talk about, okay, um, the capture, curate, consume, and act. So this is how we see the data value chain. Just like we have the hydrocarbon value chain across uh, exploration, development, production, and subsequently um, abandonment. This is how we see that, okay, when we talk about the initial stages of data, how, how do we capture the data? How is data transmitted um, you know, from, from our field all the way um, into the decision point area? So we, in digital, there's a lot of talk about um, investment, 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 right? So this is where we see that actually the initial phase of capture, curate, consume, these are all costs. 
So looking from a digital investment perspective, everything that we put in terms of capturing the data, be it by upgrading our infrastructure, buying the hardware, the associated software behind it, these are all costs. And then we spend uh, some more money uh, to curate the data. So what is normally money spent on curating data? So those are the likes of we pay for integration services, we pay to develop solutions, and we pay to manage our data quality, we do modeling to a certain extent, having workflows, etc. So all that is still processing the data. After that, through the likes of um, you know, perhaps uh, uh, the consumption layer, so we talk about, okay, how do we consume uh, you know, the, the data through um, getting insight? How do we put in analysis uh, behind it? So all this is still cost. So from the point you capture, you curate, consume, it's all cost. And normally these are the costs that people talk about, uh, you know, the high cost of ownership uh, for digital transformation until the point that you can actually act on the data that you receive. So from our lens, um, and it's from the experience that uh, I've been facing also, this is where we kind of like, okay, how can we um, make the process faster so that you know the, the data that we have, which is in abundance, is something that we quickly add on. Because only when you take action on the data that, that you receive, that's where the value comes in. So this is, um, if we talk about uh, the business value for upstream, we talk about production, uh, unit, produ uh, unit producing costs, we talk about uh, you know, the, the cost to, to run the business, uh, the cost of accepting one barrel of oil. So this is where it comes into place. But um, we are also cognizant that um, you know, all this is good and great if uh, the data is readily available. But um, we're quoting the data book report, right? So in any organization, and um, oil and gas is no exception, most of the data that we are looking at is very much dark data. Looking um, far uh, beneath our line of sight, and to extract this is another challenge. So, with this in mind, this um, so our investments uh, in terms of digital. Um, the earlier years, uh, we are very infant in this. So, the earlier years is uh, looking into focusing on basically getting the data out, you know, getting the data out so that we can actually mine it and so we can actually act on it. So, so that is the ambition. Um, going to the next slide, I would. Um, I'm very interested in this. Um, these are the very the meaningful statistics uh, along the you know the, the few months we have been doing this. That uh, we found data from our physical entities, right? Uh, be it from our offshore facilities, uh, processing plants, uh, ships, even from center uh, itself, uh, which generates uh, business data. Um, we found that at least the data that we need to work on for our digital transformation, about only 45% is coming from the machines. So the rest are based on people, how people enter the data. So it's already something which is the process. Uh, there are multiple uh, fingerprints on the data. And this was something very interesting that we found that a lot of our decision making, we, we need to rely on at least 55% data which is generated by uh, our people. So in, in that sense, uh, when we looked into digital transformation, we found that sometimes it's not um, half of the time, it's not about um, getting the best um, tools, getting the best sense, getting the sensors out there, um, but we also need to look at people and how people as um, you know, the, the other 55% of a data source keying in input, how they treat that data, how, how they need to see at the end of the day, they are the first in the value chain and whatever garbage uh, in will be garbage out. So it is um, part and parcel also for us to look into the cultural aspect of how 
uh, data is being treated uh, at source uh, by the humans that, that generate it. So that was the realization uh, when we, we started doing this, is that we have to trust the data uh, when we have to take action the data. So making sure that the people that enter that data is also something that they need to have this, uh, you know, uh, and in mind. So, so from there also, we realized that um, consistent standards and work processes at the point of curation uh, is very much required um, because being in a, in a, um, there are multiple ways of how um, certain um, work is being done. So we face this challenge. We face this challenge in terms of uh, non-standardized work process. We'll keep um, generating uh, similar type of um, data input, but from multiple type of processes. So these are the things that uh, we also realize uh, along the, you know, along the time frame that we really need to get a, a grasp on if we really are curious about, uh, you know, um, having the data that we need for decision making. And from there, when we consume, you use when we use um, the data for trusted actionable insight um, in a consumption layer, and uh, we realize uh, all this um, is not something that it can be alone without having a proper uh, enterprise architecture in place, uh, infrastructure, and also managing the parameters to cybersecurity. Um, so, so those that was a realization of ours of how uh, you know to put uh, the structure in place. And all this, um, when we look at digital investment, are still cost. Uh, so these are the challenges that we face when we talk to our uh, you know management teams that. Okay, we say that you know for the next uh, one or two years we have to spend uh, you know a bit of money uh, investment in terms of getting the fundamental right um, because the notion is when you're doing digital transformation you want to see results tangible tangible PNL in fact uh, for that matter for example so this is um, but um, happy to say um, through our uh, efforts and journey. Uh, selected a business case pain point, we have managed to then uh, be on the app side. So data-driven insights um, using um, our predictive analytics, uh, using our foresighting uh, based on analytics, we have managed to you know, go beyond the traditional uh, first principle engineering model uh, to more uh, data-driven uh, simulations, which actually had given us um, value so uh, prediction and value, and then uh, based on the prediction and value, when we should act on uh, you know the the data recommendations that we receive. But of course, uh, all this would require um, you know aggressive uh, adoption measures, uh, like I mentioned just now. Uh, when we talk about um, uh, data, we talk about humans giving fifty five percent of the information. So this is where it is uh, part of our culture digital transformation is to talk um, in a manner of how, how work change you know, for the people on the ground, uh, how, how work change for those who are you know, contributing data to the business processes. So, so essentially, um, in a nutshell, um, our transformation, um, kickstarting it has always been um, to look uh, across the data value chain. Uh, just as much as we talked uh, about, um, again, the upstream oil and gas value chain, data value chain is something that runs concurrently with it, because only from there, then um, we are able to uh, effectively translate the data that we have curated into um, actionable um, drip and give value to the organization. So essentially, um, that's my uh, key uh, sharing uh, with, the, with the open group today. I'm happy to take in uh, any um, questions from the audience. Ask me anything. <laughs> Thank you. Ask you anything. That's great. Thank you very much for that. And you brought you brought us back on time despite the uh, the hiccups. So I I appreciate that and the late hour there. Um, Thank you. So it, it's in, it's interesting uh, the different uh, times of day that people are participating in this. So, um, 
one of the questions that, that came in for you, uh, and I can, what are the tools um, or, or what tools do you adopt to catch a, capture the data from the diversified data sources? And how do the tools handle the complexities of the data? All right. Um, so to answer that question, uh, I would like to go back to uh, this slide here. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody can see this slide. Um, so yes, uh, in terms of tools, um, so basically, um, again, it goes back to the process, uh, business process area. So for the more mature um, operations uh, of sites uh, which are instrumented, uh, we have the, you know, the likes of the PI instrumentation. Uh, and so those are the traditional uh, instrumentation tools. Uh, but we have also moved uh, across um, where not all our fields, uh, I mean, being um, brownfields, not all is fully instrumented. So this is where we have started to dabble into IoT, uh, IoT sensors um, due to the lower um, investment required. And for fields which we, um, you know, don't require so much of uh, human movement uh, to actually go and check the, check the gauges. Um, so, so it's a it's a very sorry, a very uh, my rep of uh, tools that, that we also use. Uh, but on top of that, um, again, like I mentioned, um, people still contribute about fifty five percent of the data. So this is mainly in terms of business data, uh, interpreted interpreting financial data. Yes, we have the SAP. Uh, financials, but then uh, interpreting it as to a certain way, uh, you know, to, to suit the, the business metrics. So I would say to answer this question, um, it is actually a mixture. So you have the traditional uh, instrumentation, uh, offshore tools, uh, both offshore and uh, onshore facilities. Uh, you have the uh, IoT, the uh, analytics, edge analytics. And you also have uh, going back to people filling up um, forms, uh, operations report so that is actually a source of data as well and what you do is ingest uh, those multiple multiple uh, you know templates that you have uh, yeah so we are it is um unfortunately you can't really 100 percent get it from the machine understood understood thank you so uh, another question um can you can you speak to to the role you headed on your chart of an enterprise architecture going across the bottom or part way across the bottom. Um, can you speak to the role of the enterprise architects in your company uh, in your digital transformation? Okay. Um, we are very uh, we are very much at the infancy stage of uh, enterprise architecture. Right. Um, However, uh, in terms of business architecture, uh, this is something that um, we are quite um, I wouldn't say infant, uh, mature in a sense that uh, due to uh, the regulations, uh, in our uh, capacity, we are both um, host authority and operator. Uh, and as a you know host authority imposing to operator, there are you know guiding principles in place, and among them is having uh, you know uh, business processes uh, available. So that one we feel is uh, you know the first step of having a very good uh, enterprise architecture is having right. that business layer uh, intact uh, and part of um, driving consistent uh, standard and work processes. Um, we are very much um, experimenting a lot on EA. Um, it is a very big ocean to explore. Uh, yes, so that, yes, definitely. It's, um, so what we have actually done is to focus on um, top critical business processes first. So by top critical business processes, um, and then work from there, uh, the infrastructure layer, uh, and then uh, the subsequent uh, data information uh, flow. And so we have tackled it you know, in that manner. Else, uh, else it would be just where do we start? Right. Yep. Well, there's a there's a whole community at the Open Group that can uh, can certainly um, share experiences uh, on on how to uh, embrace EA and get the true value from it, um, as well as uh, an earlier speaker uh, Pedro Vieira from Petrobas spoke about uh, two of our other standards activities in um, inside the Open Group for the Open Process Automation Forum and the uh, 
Open Subsurface Data Universe Forum are, are both working on things that would uh, certainly, I think, be of interest to your organization. So yeah. one, one final question, um, and I, if I may, um, are you using public cloud offerings for data analysis? And if yes, are you able to say which one? <laughs> okay, um, let me take the, this uh, question in terms, I'll take the number one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, moving forward, uh, I mean, cloud, um, whether it be it public or uh, ring fence uh, towards, uh, you know, uh, our internal cloud it is still uh, something that um, I mean that is for economics of scale It's definitely for economics of scale and then the, you know moving towards uh, everything as a service uh, you know leveraging uh, on the industry uh, co-creation um, that is basically uh, in my opinion is um, we've got to go on that angle um, yeah. so, um, when you talk about pace being fast, uh, so most of the you know platform services are already on cloud, and it's uh, no point for you as an organization to develop it uh, by yourself. When you know when it, it is it is a that's why we have open group. So you we have all the you know my red of uh, you know, solution, which is generally offered on the public cloud. Mm -hmm. um which one um i i'm not going to answer that <laughs> no no and that and and that's fine <laughs> and that's fine i understand yeah. and that well you've 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 kept the time uh, despite the, the challenges thank you for your insight i i should mm -hmm. i should it, i should uh, say that uh, one of the messages that came through the chat channel while you were, while you were speaking was um great compliment to your slides um, and I, I i read it in out now Brilliant visuals in this presentation, clear and communicate so much in an easy to digest way. So um, thank you for communicating uh, clearly and, uh, and for your participation at this late hour. Uh, a thank virtual you. round of applause. <laughs>